I didn't think so at all. Now I'm just going to make sure, good. Just wanted to make sure that was working because ironically enough, if you guys have worked with projectors before, you know that there's usually a projector challenge. Well today, everything worked perfectly with the projector, so I said something's got to go wrong. And this little thing that I bought over the weekend took us about a half hour to get working. <laughs> the little remote, but oh well, it's working now. So today I'm going to talk about customer service. And my first question for you guys in the room here, by show of hands, how many people in the room are in customer service? We're in the right room. That's what I wanted to bring up. In my opinion, everybody is in customer service. Because your customer can be your coworker, your customer can be your manager, your customer can be your employee, your cus customer can actually be your spouse in some ways. I mean, you are selling them on certain things to go to that certain movie or what have you. So I wanted to make the case that we're all in customer service. So if that is the case, my question to you guys is, and I'm including myself here, does our customer service stink? Why do I bring that up? I bring that up because I, what I'm hoping today, what my whole goal is, is if nothing else, we take a look at our own customer service and analyze that. I'm not saying it does stink. I'm not saying it's fantastic. What I am saying is, is that I don't believe enough people actually look at that. The good news is that some of us, I think, are born with the trait that we automatically understand. We're passionate about our customers. We want to treat them right. We know what it means to treat our customers well. So we're probably doing it even by accident. But what I'm suggesting is if that you are that person, share it with somebody else. I sat with somebody yesterday, and I interviewed him, and we got talking, and within five minutes, I knew that this guy gets it. I don't know if you've ever been with somebody and you know that they have that passion. When I first sat down with Elizabeth Noonan, I knew within two minutes that she had that passion that she gets it. So I think you can see that from a mile away. But at the same time, it can also be trained. So I'm hoping that we can pass it on to that next generation. Now, you probably can't. I don't know if you guys can all see that. But on that screen, I'll tell you, in, in essence, why I put that up there. It's because as far as whether or not our customer service is where it should be, or if it's at that level where we feel it should be, I did some sessions here four months ago. And I, at the end of the sessions, we passed out some evaluation forms. And we asked questions such as, uh, when asked about customer service, how do you feel it, it is today? Do you feel out there when you're going and working with a customer, when you're going and working with a supplier, are they treating you the way they should be? The common responses were, we need to start taking care of our customers. We need to be in tune with what our customers, uh, with our customers and their needs. We need to start personalizing our experiences. But even more profound to me was when asked who could benefit from this presentation, if you can see it up there, basically what it says is everyone. It scares me when I ask in surveys who can benefit from these sessions that we're saying everyone. And I looked at the surveys and I can tell you there was very seldom a survey that didn't have on there somebody could use this. We could improve. So the question becomes why do I even care? Because at the end of it, you only care if I care. Meaning what's my personal attachment to it? My personal attachment to it is this. I moved out to Alberta back in 1997. I landed a position with a Fortune 500 company. When I got that position, the general manager, I had actually applied with 177 applicants. When I asked him, why did you hire me? He said, because Islanders have a reputation for caring for people, for taking care of people, for putting other people's needs first, for taking care of visitors when they come here, for being sincere, and it goes on and on and on. I mean, it's that whole gentle island thing. And as an Islander, I care about that. I mean, that was my competitive advantage. And I interviewed Doug Hall uh, back in June. I don't know if people in the room you know who Doug Hall is. And Doug Hall has helped a lot of people expand globally and what have you. And when I interviewed Doug, one of the things he said is that is our competitive advantage as PEI. That when, when he had a friend that came to visit him, and they were driving on the way to his ranch, and their car broke down, and they're from, I think, New York, and they said uh, somebody came up and stopped and said, here's a booster cable or here's a jumper, and, and the guy said, well, what do you want me to do with it when I'm done? He goes, I'll oh, just drop it off down at the Quick Mart down there. I know who they are. They'll, they'll leave it for me. He'd never seen that in his life. He, he told Doug, I almost passed out. I, I didn't even know how to deal with this. I didn't know if the guy was putting us on, if there was something wrong with him. But again, this is our competitive advantage as Islanders. So my concern is, going back to the point of this, is are we losing that? That's my concern. If that's our main competitive advantage and we lose it, guess what we have left? That's why I'm concerned about this. And I will tell you that I've been doing a lot of surveys. I'm working on a book right now about customer service, and I've been doing a lot of surveys. And as I mentioned, my experience is it's going in the wrong direction. 
By show of hands, how many people, and after asking that, I mean, I should have asked you this earlier, but how many people in the room feel that customer service is, is actually going in the wrong direction overall? That's a pretty big number in the room. So again, that's why I believe it's important. And that's why I've been dedicating most of my speaking career to customer service. It's changed. I used to be gen a generalist. I used to talk about success. I mean, I'm out there interviewing people all the time and looking at 400 people I interview. If 395 are doing this, then obviously there's something to it. So I used to be out sharing that message, and that was my main goal. But now customer service has kind of taken over my life when it comes to being a speaker because I'm so passionate about trying to change it at least one person at a time. So that's what my passion is for. And why do you need to be conscious of the message you're sending to everybody that you talk to? because you are the customer experience. You know, if somebody walks through the door of Connolly Financial, Steve, and you're the only person in the office at that time, that whatever experience they have with you, that is the customer experience that they receive. I don't think people realize if they're not in, uh, let's say, retail or hospitality or the restaurant industry, I think people that see that industry, they think, okay, they're creating a customer experience, but I'm not. I'm in consulting, or I'm in uh, to financial services, or I'm in hockey growth. You, know, you don't think, a lot of those people think, well, I'm not in customer service. But again, going back to the original point, you're creating experience, whether positive or negative, or whether you know it or not, every time you interact with a customer. So you need to be conscious, is, are you creating a good experience or a negative experience?